Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to talk about what it takes to start a YouTube channel. Do you really need a nice expensive camera to start one? Or does the cell phone or the action cam suffice? Let's get into this video. We'll compare the pros and cons of the phone, the action camera, and the camera. I'm filming on my cell phone right now, and that's kind of where I mean to start with this. If you have a cell phone with a camera on it, you can probably start a YouTube. I'm not using any external audio or anything, just the cell phone at the moment. I'm just using a Motorola, I think it's a Z3, it's not even that great of a smartphone. So if you have anything better than I do, like, there's no excuse for not starting a channel. Um, it's pretty cool the things you can do with one, this is just regular HD video, but even the little Z3 has a few tricks up its sleeve, like this. Yeah, that's right. It can do awesome slow motion. Uh, the image quality is obviously not amazing, but it'll do 120 frames a second, which is the same as my camera that was $2,000 when it came out. So that's a pretty awesome deal that you can do with cell phones. Now the image quality doesn't really compare that well, but it's good enough to start a video. So another thing I didn't mention about the cell phone that's awesome is just how easy it is to use. Um, if you want regular video, select regular video and hit record. If you want slow-mo, select slow-mo, hit record. It does it all for you. It even slows the audio down, which is something that's pretty difficult to do with regular cameras sometimes. And um, the only downside really, like I said, the image quality doesn't match up and the audio doesn't quite match up. Right now I'm using external audio to give you a difference between what I was doing earlier with just the cell phone and now. And also a neighbor across the way behind me started mowing, so I'm hoping the external will help cut that out some. So one thing that's a really easy, cheap investment to make if all you have is a cell phone, you want to improve your video quality, get yourself a little lav mic or something. Uh, you can get them that plug straight into the phone. That's the easiest, most simple way to do it. Um, me, I'm using a Zoom H1N. Uh, I got this because I can use it across all of my cameras, whether it's my cell phone here, an action cam, or my full camera. Um, so it's pretty versatile and cool. It also has built-in microphones on the top for stereo. So if you're into recording your own sound effects and stuff, it's awesome for that. But I will say that's probably the first step I'd recommend to most people wanting to improve their YouTube videos is look into getting better audio. Because you can deal with the image quality not being that good out of my cell phone right now, I'm sure but the audio being so much better is gonna make a huge difference, especially with this background noise going on of my neighbor mowing. Uh, this should work a lot better than my cell phone was. All right, so say you wanna do something like start a sports channel, you wanna do something like riding your mountain bike, you want to do a fishing channel, any kind of sports channel. You might be checking into action cams as an investment to up your game from your cell phone. It's actually a pretty cool idea. I've got one myself um, that I actually bought just for my photo vlogs. If you check out my Nikon F5 video, the Yashica MG1 video, and the shooting film with my wife video, those were heavily filmed on my action cam and they are a ton of fun. The coolest thing with mine is it's a special kind of action camera. It's kind of a subset in that genre. It's a 360 camera. And the awesome thing with those is you can just get it out, hit record, and the 360 cam does what its name implies. It films everything for 360 degrees around you. You don't have to worry about aiming it. You just hit record and record. So when you get done with it, you bring it back home, you tell the camera where to look, or you can even leave it in 360 now and let the viewer choose where to look. It's a really cool idea and I'm really happy that I bought one. There are some downsides to the 360 cam. It does require an extra workflow, especially if you're using it for vlogging. The mic on my 360 cam is horrible. It's worse than my cell phone. So I, I have to use the zoom with it. So now not only do you have to go home and compose all your shots in post and get everything edited before you can even start cutting your video together, but you've also got to sync all your audio and do all of that. To be fair, that's easy enough these days with technology. I use DaVinci Resolve, which is a free editing program. 
and it makes it super easy to sync audio. So it's not that big of a deal, but it is more steps that you have to do to keep in mind. Now comparing the Insta360 to something like a GoPro, I would say if you're doing something that requires a more rugged and reliable camera, go with a GoPro Hero 8 or something like that all day long. The One X is not a bad camera by any means, and I'm really happy with it, but it's just not durable. The GoPros are meant to be insanely durable. I have an original HD Hero that I've catapulted myself over the bars on my dirt bike on and landed directly on it. Still works. So I would say that's the one caveat to the 360 cams is they are not nearly as tough right now. The One R looks pretty promising, but I've not had my hands on that, so I can't say for sure. So one thing I'm enjoying the most about the 360 camera is the ability to move the shots in post. It makes it really easy to have the illusion of having a cameraman when I'm out shooting on my own and I just don't have a cameraman. Super awesome. So when image quality is king, that's where the interchangeable lens camera steps in. It's by far going to give you the best results short of buying a full-on cinema camera, and it's going to be the most workflow. I think you'll notice a trend here. The more that we add to our camera tech, the more workflow we're going to add after we shoot and even during the shoot. With my a7 III right now, I'm using a little Photo DX ring light that's cheap, and it's also something I'd highly recommend you do for indoor shooting like this. Um, between the light and the window behind me, I've had to add a variable ND filter because with the interchangeable lens camera, you need to match your shutter speeds to your frame rates. So you're already learning a lot more and having to get a little more complicated setting up your shot. And then in order to balance this exposure and make it look right on me, I've had to add another piece of gear to my kit. So with a full on camera, you can start adding a lot of gear pretty quickly. I've got a tripod with the camera on it. Like I said, the ND filter on it. The light's something I'd recommend no matter what camera you're using if you're shooting indoors. It's just always going to look better unless you have a situation where you can set up in front of window light and film. That kind of gets rid of the need for the light. But any other kind of situations, like my house, there's not really any good incoming light through the windows. So having this light is super useful for me. But yeah, the, the more stuff we add, the more complicated it gets. With the cell phone, you just hit record, you edit your clips together, bam, your YouTube video is done. The 360 cam, now you've got to start composing your shots in post, showing the camera where to look, getting all of that figured out. And then if you're trying to talk to it and you're using external audio like I am, you've got to sync the audio to the video. And then when you go into the big camera, all of that stuff's still in play. Except for now, if you're not shooting in auto, you need to learn what shutter speeds work best with what frame rates, what aperture does, uh, if you need an ND filter or not. All these different things come up um, and then that's not even accounting for if you want to get the very most out of your camera shooting in a flat profile or a log profile is awesome and gives you more room to grade and post but then that's another process you need to think about and add into your editing workflow so that'll give you the most dynamic range and the most color and everything that you want give you the most flexibility in post but it also adds another layer of complexity to it so that's kind of the cons of the big camera However, when you go into the pros, like I said, image quality is king with the interchangeable lens cameras. You get all those things like log profiles, higher dynamic range, sharper video. It just keeps going. Another cool thing with interchangeable lens cameras, a lot of times you get a lot of variable frame rates. So with the Sony a7 III, I can shoot in normal speed. I can shoot in regular slow motion and super slow motion. So with the what that translates to in camera terms, you get 24 and 30 frames a second, which is pretty much normal speed. Uh, 24 frames is kind of the more cinematic frame rate. When you shoot in 60 frames a second, that can give you slow motion half the original speed. When you go to 120 frames per second, well, you're doubling the frames per second, so you can half that again, you get a quarter of your normal speed. So that's one cool thing with a lot of these modern mirrorless cameras, they give you that kind of capability. Now, if you're wanting to move into the bigger camera world and you want to save some money, 
One that I've personally used and can highly recommend is the Panasonic G85. The autofocus on it's not amazing, but you get amazing in-body stabilization. So if you're hand holding your shots, they're gonna stay really smooth looking and it's, it's really great. The other cool thing with the G85 is it's just dirt cheap right now. Um, you can get one with a lens for well under $1,000. And the cool thing also with Panasonic's Micro Four Thirds system and Olympus for that matter, the lenses are a little less expensive too. So if you want to retain your autofocus and get modern lenses, Micro Four Thirds makes it a little more accessible. Another awesome Micro Four Thirds camera is the Panasonic GH5. That's going to add a lot of features my Sony a7 III has and some that it doesn't even have into your video kit. It has slower slow motion than the a7 III. The in-body stabilization is world better than my a7 III. And that's from a camera that's pretty old now, guys. It's pretty cool. However, the thing with the G85 and the GH5 is they're a small micro four thirds sensor. Um, for photography, it still works really well and I actually really enjoyed using it. But full frame does have its advantages, which means you get a bigger image sensor inside of your camera. And that's where the Sony is pretty awesome. When you get into the Sony a7 III, the Nikon Z6, the Canon EOS R, those types of cameras, your lenses get more expensive, your cameras get more expensive. But if you're looking to hybrid and do photos and YouTube videos, things like that, it's hard to beat those camera systems if you're looking for the utmost quality. And one reason I'm specifically mentioning mirrorless cameras instead of DSLR cameras is right now I'm shooting on a lens that cost me probably $40. It's a vintage Minolta Rokor X 50mm f1.7 lens. Mirrorless cameras make it super easy to adapt old lenses onto your camera. I have one that I've used in a lot of my video work. It's an old Auto China lens. I spent $8 on it, I believe, at a pawn shop. And yeah, it works great. The only downside to it is you don't have autofocus. So if you're trying to vlog with your big camera like that, it makes it really a pain, especially since the Sony doesn't have a flip around screen. Um, it's hard to get yourself in focus with a manual focus lens. One cheat I've used, Sony's Imaging Edge app will let you control and look through the video or look through the camera on your cell phone. And looking through the camera on your cell phone gives you a decent idea of whether or not you're in focus. I still usually end up taking a photo of myself just to see if it's in focus before I record because the resolution you get when you're Wi-Fiing the screen over to your phone is not great, so it's kind of hard to tell even then. But it does work and it's less expensive and it's one way if you're thinking about getting into mirrorless cameras you can save even more money. Just buy the camera body by itself. The adapters that I'm using are just cheap dumb adapters which means they don't have any electronic contacts. So they range from 10 to $20 each. And like I said, the lenses, you can get decent lenses anywhere from my $8 lens up to you know, $100 for inexpensive vintage prime lenses that give you pretty good quality, actually. But yeah, guys, that's kind of a quick summary of the three different cameras that we're looking at. The cell phone's super easy to use. It's the simplest, and it's one that we probably all have in our pockets. The action cams are also pretty easy to use. They add a little bit more to the workflow, especially if you go with the 360 camera but they can do some really cool stuff that the big cameras and the cell phones can't. And they're just super easy to mount on anything. And that's one of the biggest advantage to cell phones and action cameras. Like these things are tiny. I can slip them in my pocket and have them with me anywhere, whether I'm on a hike, um, on my mountain bike, you know, whatever I'm doing, I can take these with me. The a7 III image quality is king. It's gonna get you the most out of your image. It's gonna be the most workflow. It's gonna be the most work to set up. Uh, in general, it's just going to be the most work. It's harder to carry it with you. You need your own bag for it and all that stuff when you're using a big camera. But like I said, you get the most quality out of the interchangeable lens cameras. So that pretty well sums it up. And if you're just wanting to start a YouTube channel and you don't have the funds for any of that, there's no excuse not to go ahead and use your cell phone. It's pretty cool how versatile they are now and what decent quality you can get out of them. And you can just start a YouTube channel right now, guys. Um, it's usually better to be done than perfect. So if you just want to start, go ahead and start. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can always work up later as you get the funds coming in. So yeah, I hope this video is helpful to you guys. If it was helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I've got some film I'm shooting right now. So the next couple of videos ought to be film shooting videos. Um, I may upload a mountain bike video or two also, since we're all stuck at home and got lots of extra free time. I'm not being able to get out and do my trips for photography. So Hopefully maybe we can do something with that and see how that goes. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.